I will surpass him. I will destroy him. What makes you who you are? Is it your genetic code that defines your body or your ideas that define your mind? This is the core theme that the first Metal Gear Solid aims to deal with, which is represented by the duality and conflict of Liquid and Solid Snake. Two clones who share the same codename and genetic heritage, existing as mirror images, destined to face one another in battle. The two brothers were birthed from a genetic experiment to create the perfect soldier entitled the Terrible Children. Before his war criminal status and eventual death due to his outer heaven in Zanzibar land uprisings, Big Boss was seen as the greatest soldier alive, so they wanted him as their reference. Taking a sample of DNA from his then comatose body, they created eight cloned embryos and implanted them in a surrogate mother. Then, six of those eight were aborted to encourage growth in the remaining two. Further genetic modifications were also performed to ensure that one clone expressed all of Big Boss's dominant genes and the other expressed all of his recessive genes. The end result being Solid and Liquid Snake, two incredibly talented soldiers bred for combat who would eventually serve in Big Boss's own unit, Foxhound. Prior to the events of Metal Gear Solid 1, Liquid Snake had lived a storied career of military exceptionalism in the British Special Air Service and British Special Intelligence Service. During the Gulf War, he infiltrated Iraq as a sleeper agent before being taken captive as a prisoner of war, but eventually being rescued by the United States. This is likely when he got involved in the Foxhound unit and eventually rose the ranks to be its leader after Big Boss was killed by Solid Snake and Colonel Campbell retired. With his father's unit under his control, he changed their uniforms to match the trench coat Big Boss wore as a form of tribute. Other than him, Foxhound was also comprised of a series of unhinged soldiers with years of experience. Revolver Ocelot, Vulcan Raven, Sniper Wolf, Decoy Octopus, and Psycho Mantis, each one possessing exceptional skills that sometimes crossed over into the supernatural, and all taking orders from Liquid Snake himself. He and his team were brought in to supervise a weapons test happening at a secluded research and development facility on Shadow Moses Island in Alaska. That test being of a railgun built as part of a weapons platform called Metal Gear Rex, a giant nuclear missile equipped walking tank being developed in secret at the facility. Realizing the opportunity before him, he and the rest of Foxhound stage a revolt, seizing control of the facility and taking up the mantle of the Sons of Big Boss. They threaten to launch a nuclear missile from Metal Gear Rex unless the US government hands over $1 billion, as well as the highly protected remains of Big Boss in the next 24 hours. To counteract this, the government pulls Solid Snake out of retirement since he was so effective in stopping Big Boss in Zanzibar land. His mission is to infiltrate Shadow Moses and eliminate the nuclear threat. To do this, he has to go up against the bizarre members of Foxhound as well as the genome soldiers stationed at the facility who have all been aligned with Liquid thanks to psychic indoctrination from Psycho Mantis. Solid Snake is supported by several new faces as well as familiar ones like Master Miller and Colonel Campbell who both assisted him in Metal Gear 2. As you sneak through the facility and make it from one objective to the next, you'll sometimes catch a glimpse of Liquid as he's tending to important issues. At one point, you even take him on in a hind where he manages to survive being hit by a dozen Stinger missiles and crashing from the highest point of the facility. As the plot unravels, it's eventually revealed that Liquid had been impersonating Master Miller on your codec the entire time. He'd been keeping tabs on you, feeding you misinformation, and subtly guiding you towards activating Metal Gear Rex for him since he lacked the keycards necessary to do it himself. Liquid had killed Master Miller at least three days earlier and made his way into your inner circle to manipulate you into achieving his goals for him. This recontextualizes the entire game on your subsequent playthroughs because you realize that the advice and opinions you hear from Miller are actually from Liquid. It's interesting to hear him calm and collected compared to how loud and theatrical he is in person. With Rex activated, he finally decides to meet with you in person so he can gloat about his victory and snuff out your life himself. Liquid! Snake! Did you like my sunglasses? He reveals that the entire time, Solid Snake had been carrying a virus called Fox Dye which had secretly been injected into him by the scientist Naomi Hunter right before embarking on his mission. That virus was specially designed to target specific genetic codes and induce a heart attack, as a way of covertly assassinating targets that the government didn't want causing any more trouble. The targets selected for Fox Dye elimination were the members of Foxhound as well as the arms tech president Kenneth Baker. All Snake needed to do was get into close proximity to the members of Foxhound and Fox Dye would end up killing them eventually. This is the reason the DARPA chief was killed early on since it was secretly Decoy Octopus in disguise after Revolver Ocelot killed the real DARPA chief for knowing his identity as a double agent. Liquid tasked Decoy Octopus with directing Snake towards obtaining the keycards but didn't expect Fox Dye to factor in and kill him. He decides to add a vaccine for Fox Dye to his list of demands, which it seems like the White House never had any plans on meeting. 
He claims he has no worries over Fox Die because if the virus didn't kill Snake yet, it shouldn't kill him either since they're clone brothers created from the same DNA. This is a huge revelation as Snake was never aware he was a clone of Big Boss or that he had a clone brother since this was something introduced for the first time in this game. Now, Liquid finally has his chance to rant about his feelings and the hatred he's felt for years. He heavily implies that he spent at least a small portion of his life with Big Boss being trained in his likeness. He claims to be the clone that Big Boss chose, and when you think about it, it makes sense since Solid Snake was the one sent into Outer Heaven by Big Boss intentionally to fail and die. I'm the one Father chose. So that's why you're so obsessed with Big Boss. Some warped kind of love. Love? It's hate! He always told me I was inferior, and now I'll have my revenge! <laughs> you should understand me, brother. You killed our father with your own hands! You stole my chance for revenge! Liquid had spent his entire life coping with the knowledge that he was the inferior recessive clone of Big Boss, made up of the leftovers used to create Solid Snake. This drove him to strive even harder to obtain greatness, and his goal in life was to kill Big Boss to prove to himself that he had worth. He hates Solid Snake from the bottom of his heart for not only being genetically superior, but stealing that opportunity from him. He became completely enveloped by the inferiority complex he developed because of the circumstances of his creation, believing himself to be destined for greatness, but chained down by his genetic code. I'm just the leftovers of what they used to make you. Can you understand what it's like to know that you're garbage since the day you were born? He hates that Solid Snake exists and stands as a symbol of his inferiority. Liquid puts so much effort into getting to where he is, meanwhile Snake doesn't even acknowledge or take pride in his genetic heritage. If Solid Snake killed Big Boss, then naturally to prove himself, Liquid must now kill him. But he won't stop there, he also plans on realizing Big Boss's idea of Outer Heaven, succeeding where his father failed, with Shadow Moses as his foundation, and the Genome Soldiers as his army. These soldiers are like brothers to him too, as they were all genetically modified to mimic Big Boss's DNA as a way of producing superior fighters. With that, Liquid begins to pilot Rex, which is probably the toughest boss fight in the game. Only with the help of Grey Fox is Snake able to get the upper hand when he returns to damage the machine's radome as a way to make up for his actions in Zanzibar land. This forces Liquid to open up Rex's cockpit to guide the machine with his own two eyes. In retaliation for damaging Rex, Liquid crushes him beneath its foot, killing the man Snake considered to be his best friend. Foolish man! He prayed for death, and it found him! You see, you can't protect anyone! Not even yourself! This pushes Snake to keep fighting, and now that Liquid is exposed, he can finally do damage to him, as well as Rex's internals. Eventually, Snake succeeds in crippling Rex, being knocked out himself, but somehow Liquid is still standing. He brings Snake to the now inoperable Rex to stage their final battle in style. Liquid makes it very clear that he hasn't given up on fighting yet, restating his goal of launching Rex's nuke to bring fear and chaos to humanity in order to create a world where soldiers like the two of them are respected and needed once again. And he claims Snake secretly desires a world like this as well. After all, they were both created to be killers. You enjoy all the killing. That's why. What? Are you denying it? Haven't you already killed most of my comrades? That was... <laughs> I watched your face when you did it. It was filled with the joy of battle. It's his own, more destructive take on Big Boss's Outer Heaven, one that would result in constant war and conflict for him to feed off of. But before getting to any of that, his primary goal is much more simple, to kill Snake and be free of the idea of inferiority that has haunted him his entire life. At the same time, it's revealed that an order was made to nuke the entire facility to destroy all evidence of any of this occurring. With bombers on their way to vaporize everyone there, Liquid can still only focus on getting his revenge, even if immediately after he knows all traces of him will be wiped off the face of the planet. What matters is that he knows he has value, even if he only gets to enjoy that for a short moment. He won't die knowing his brother gets to be superior just because he lost the luck of the draw in some genetic experiment he had no say in. This is what he's been dreaming of for years, and he can finally prove himself by beating Snake in a one-on-one -on -one brawl. No tricks, no fancy technology, just the two of them, unarmed, shirtless, fighting to the death using their skills and skills alone. Of course it wouldn't be as fun unless he had a hostage there hooked up to explosives to stop Snake from running away. 
the fight itself is a nice little switch up from the standard sneaking and shooting gameplay. Liquid dances around the top of Rex laughing and making fun of you. You can tell he's getting a ton of satisfaction out of finally getting to take on Snake like this. He has a deadly charge attack, but aside from that, he's pretty easy to defeat. The fight ends with Liquid falling from Rex's head and smashing into the cold floor below. I actually looked it up and Rex is about 43 feet tall, and the average height required to kill a normal human is around 49 feet, so it is possible for someone to survive a fall like this. Though I doubt any of those people would immediately get into a jeep and engage in a chase sequence while shooting a machine gun in one hand. The two of them end up crashing their vehicles as they make it out to meet the Alaskan sunrise. Snake is trapped under his jeep, unable to get himself free, meanwhile Liquid still refuses to die. He shambles over to the helpless Snake and readies his gun to put an end to his torment. Then, right at the last second, Liquid suffers a heart attack induced by Fox Die. You see, while Liquid thought he was immune to it because Snake was, in actuality it was reprogrammed by Naomi Hunter to kill Snake as well, as revenge for what Snake did to her adoptive brother, Grey Fox, the only family she ever knew. Instead though, this reprogramming caused the virus to kill Liquid. The idea of this moment reflects the main theme of the game. You aren't just your genetics. Liquid lived his entire life feeling like he was in the shadow of his father and brother due to genetic inferiority. He felt restricted by it, defined by it, and that made him grow bitter, jealous, and spiteful. He desired more than anything to defeat the two people that he felt he was predestined to be inferior to. And through that, he believed he would break the curse of his heritage and be able to live freely knowing that the people he was inferior to no longer existed. The entire idea of cloning Big Boss and creating the genome soldiers follows the idea that you can recreate someone's greatness by recreating their genes, but the point of the game is to prove that that is impossible. What makes a person great is their ideas, their beliefs, what they choose to fight for, and how hard they're willing to fight for them. Solid Snake didn't care that he was a clone, superior, or inferior. He chose to live as his own man. So when Fox Die, a virus designed to target a specific genetic code, was targeting the two snakes, it killed the one who accepted himself as nothing more than his genes. In reality, as it's revealed at the end of the game, Liquid was misinformed and had everything backwards. It was actually Liquid who was created from Big Boss's superior dominant genes, while Solid Snake was the inferior recessive clone. Liquid was the clone fated for greatness, but he let his own self-doubt over his genes consume him, and because of that, the inferior clone won. In the end, it was never a battle between genes, but a battle of ideas. You aren't better just because you were born a certain way, you need to work to become a better person yourself in your daily life. What Liquid was cursing, the idea that he would be destined to fail because of his genes, is exactly what Snake proved wrong by defeating him. Hopefully, that idea would have finally brought him peace. It's such a simple idea conveyed through such a complex and interesting world, and that's why people love the original Metal Gear Solid games. Since this game, Liquid has continued to be a fan favorite villain, and his influence can still be felt in many of the later titles. In the grand scheme of things, none of this stuff adds to his character at all, and in some cases it actually takes away from his character, with most of it being a red herring by the end anyway. Liquid works best as the one-off villain in Metal Gear Solid 1 because his character is tied to the theme of the game and that theme is wrapped up nicely with his death at the end. What made people love him was the fact that he was loud, extravagant, and could always find humor in whatever was happening, despite the circumstances of his birth. He was you, but stronger, more cocky, and with more assets at his disposal. You spent the entire game sneaking around thinking he was out in the open, but it was revealed that he was the one who was pulling your strings like a puppet. He got you to do things he couldn't just through subtle manipulation. Just so he could kill you and fulfill his plans of a war-torn world where soldiers are appreciated again. His loss was a self-fulfilling prophecy, but he should have known that he was more than just his DNA. Maybe then he wouldn't have grown so angry and he wouldn't have needed to get beaten by his inferior brother.